Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at Lewis dot structures and how to interpret those drawings. We'd like to get acquainted with the various formalisms of writing and interpreting Lewis dot structures. What's the difference between a pair of dots and a line? When can you use dots? When can you use lines? Those sorts of things. Um, and also work on developing a process for drawing these Lewis dot structures. So to start with some of the notation or the vocabulary that goes with this notation, let's take a look at a very simple molecule, hydrogen, H2. Um, these two structures that are drawn here um, are two equivalent ways of representing how hydrogen, how a hydrogen atom bonds with another hydrogen atom. In this structure over here on the left, we are showing two dots right here in between the two hydrogen atoms. That's representing that shared pair of electrons. So each dot is equal to one electron. And to form the bond, we're going to share a pair of electrons. Um, in place of those two dots, we can also draw one line, as is shown in this structure on the right. So this one line is equivalent to two dots when it's drawn in between two atoms, and that'll be referred to as a bonding pair. There we go. Yes, that is a bonding pair. So either those two dots in between two atoms or the one line in between um, is referred to as a bonding pair. And if there's one pair of electrons shared, we're going to call that a single bond. The oxygen molecule, O2 gas, um, provides an example of a couple of new things. Um, one of those is the concept of a double bond. In a double bond, there are going to be two pairs of electrons shared. And sometimes when we start writing lots of dots, especially like if you're doing this on paper and you're erasing things and revising structures, the dots get to be hard to distinguish. Um, and so we'll often draw the two lines um, in place of the four dots. And two lines uh, mean two bonds. Four dots also mean two bonds. And the oxygen molecule also um, gives us an example of something known as a lone pair. A lone pair is a pair of electrons that is not shared between two atoms. They are localized on just one atom. And I realize in going over this that I forgot on this left-hand structure to draw the second lone pair. Each one of these oxygens has two lone pairs. And another term that you will see for lone pair is non-bonding pair. So lone pair or non-bonding pair um, will be a pair of electrons that is not shared. And then nitrogen and two gas gives us the opportunity to look at a triple bond. Over here on the right hand side, these three lines represent three bonds or a triple bond. Each line represents a pair of electrons. So these six electrons um, also represent a uh, triple bond. And nitrogen also still has a lone pair on each one of those nitrogen Let's use the ozone molecule, which is O3, to make sure that we're uh, interpreting these structures correctly. Down at the bottom of this slide, we have two different versions of the Lewis dot structure for ozone. The one on the left uses only dots. The one on the right uses a mixture of dots and lines. Um, we want to answer this question for just one of these structures, and we should get the same answer for both. So in terms of lone pairs, let's see, I will mark the lone pairs in green. Uh, if we look at this structure on the left, there are one, two, three, four, five, six lone pairs. Those are electron pairs that are not shared between two atoms. They are located just on one. So that was six lone pair. I'll mark that 6LP. Let's take a look at the structure on the right. Make sure we get the same answer there, that these really are equivalent structures. So I'll mark the lone pairs in green again. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we've got six lone pairs over here. 
Um, let me also now, since I have to do both, mark the bonding pairs. Um, on the left-hand structure, these two um, represent one bonding pair. And then here where there are four electrons, that's two bonding pairs. So one plus two gives us three bonding pairs. And then let's look at the structure that's over on the right that uses the lines. This one line represents one bonding pair. And then this double line represents two bonding pairs. So one plus two, again, gives us three bonding pairs. So the best answer to this is six lone pairs and three bonding pairs. Before we develop a process for drawing Lewis dot structures, let's just real quickly review the octet rule. It tells us that atoms will gain, lose, or share electrons until they are surrounded by eight electrons. So as we're drawing Lewis dot structures, um, before we finish, we always want to double check to verify that the um, Lewis dot structures we're drawing have eight electrons on every atom. The one exception that we'll run into with that is hydrogen. And since hydrogen's electron configuration is just 1s1, um, it is satisfied if it looks like helium, which has an electron configuration of 1s2. Um, and so he, hydrogen um, is well represented in a Lewis dot structure if it looks like this if it has two electrons associated with it. So for hydrogen, you'll sometimes see the phrase duet rule. So anytime I say the octet rule, I need eight electrons for all of the other atoms, but only two electrons for hydrogen. So here is our basic procedure for drawing Lewis dot structures. Different textbooks teach this in different ways. And what I'm going to show you here is what I find to be the most reliable, reproducible way to draw Lewis dot structures. This is going to be um, a process where you don't always get to the final structure first. So it's like you have to kind of show your work along the way, but eventually you will get to the right structure. And the thing that I like about this particular process is that you really do get there. Um, some of the processes you kind of have to take a leap of faith um, to, to get to the final correct structure. Here it's very step by step and you will end up at the correct structure. So what is our first step? Our first step is to count valence electrons. So you're going to look at all of the elements that are present in the compound, go to the periodic table, figure out how many valence electrons that means, and then multiply it times any subscript that's on that element in the chemical formula. Um, if it's a polyatomic ion, we have to make an adjustment to that valence electron count if it's a negative ion, it means that that polyatomic ion has picked up some extra electrons. So we have to add in electrons if there's a negative charge. Um, so for instance, if we're talking about the sulfate ion, which is minus two, um, after we add up all of our valence electrons based on the elements, then we have to add another two electrons to account for that negative two charge. On the other hand, if it's something like ammonium ion, which has a positive charge, that means it's lost electrons to end up with that positive charge. And so in the case of ammonium, after we have added up all of the electrons, we then have to subtract one in order to have the accurate electron count. Now, the second step is to draw the backbone of the molecule we are going to put the least electronegative element in the center. We're going to deal with electronegativity later in this presentation. So for right now, let me just say it's also part of our nomenclature rules that the least electronegative element is usually written first. So if you're looking at a formula that's something like AX4, the least electronegative element is going to be the one that's written first. And most of the time, that's going to be the one that you only have one of. So the, the, there's only one A atom here, so we'd want to put that one in the middle, and then we'd want to arrange these four X atoms around it. And hydrogen will never be your central atom. Uh, hydrogen only has the capacity to make one bond, and kind of by 
the very definition of this concept, whatever's in the center is going to end up making more than one bond. And then um, these two steps, it really doesn't matter what order we do them in. You can count electrons first and then draw the backbone, or you can draw the backbone and then count valence electrons. But both of those things must be done before we do step three. And down here in step three, we're going to put those valence electrons that we counted up into the backbone that we drew. And here, order does matter. You need to do step A and then step B and then step C. So step A says we're gonna put octets around the outside atoms. Uh, of course, the one exception to that is hydrogen and it only wants a duet. And make sure when you put that pair of electrons on hydrogen that you put it in between hydrogen and the central atom. And um, you wanna make sure that you bond uh, the hydrogen atom to the central atom with that one pair of electrons. Then the second step says that if you have any leftover electrons after you've put octets or duets on all of the outside atoms, those leftovers get stuck onto the central atom as lone pairs. And then the third and final step here is look at the structure you just drew. If everybody has an octet, great, you are done. But if some people are short of an octet, you're gonna have to start taking some lone pairs from the outside atoms and sliding them in to be shared pairs, making double and triple bonds with the center atom. These guidelines can also help you just with a, a quick check as to whether or not the uh, structures you are drawing are valid structures. Hydrogen is going to want to make one bond. Halogens, when they are outside atoms, yeah, so this is when they're outside atoms, halogens, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, they'll want to make one bond. Oxygen will want to make two bonds, nitrogen will want to make three bonds, and carbon will want to make four bonds. Now, these numbers are not always absolutely going to happen 100% of the time, but we're going to see these numbers of bonds so often that it's a good general guideline. Our objective for this video was to get acquainted with the formalisms. Uh, what's the difference between a paradox and a line? Um, and uh, to develop a process. In the next video, we're gonna work a lot of examples of drawing Lewis dot structures.